Um, all right, so we're going to go back to our InDesign file. And now, you know, we've kind of checked for visual things. Is, the, you know, is there a bunch of text missing? Is the text running off the side of the page? Or is the image in the middle of a book or something like that? Now we're looking for more InDesign specific things. For example, are the styles correct? So if we turn back to our thing. So does the paragraph and character sheet use just SCML styles? Thankfully, we don't need to memorize everything because there's a tool that's been provided that will check for you. So back under Scribe Tool, there's a whole is, um, section called Styles. And if, if nothing else, it, 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 it's a takeaway here, I think just remembering that this is a very important tool for reviewing these InDesign files, because this is where you're going to catch conversion issues. This is where you're going to catch improperly uh, listed styles. So we can say list unmappable styles. What that's going to do is it's going to take that BTD file that we downloaded last week and just make sure everything is correct according to that style. I'll show you what it would look like if, for example, rather than series after, maybe rather than series, I needed a new style that put more space above. So I make a copy, turn this into sear alt. That would be the correct formatting for that alt style stuff that we talked about. But maybe your typesetter kind of forgets and is like, I put alt after it, so I'll just call it series alt. And they apply that to the text, do what they need to. And then they send it back to you, or maybe if you are the typesetter, you're running these checks yourself to make sure you list on mappable style. It does a check, it kind of lines everything up. And then it says, hey, I found one. Like this style is not allowed, and it's going to cause problems with your electronic book or with your next version. So you need to correct this in some way. The solution in this case would be to just introduce that hyphen back in, but it's sort of a case by case basis. But that tool is where you're going to find any of those issues, just running that list on mappable styles tool. We're going to make sure that styles are defined. Um, in design, we'll just use basic, you know, Times New Roman 12 point text. Um, uh, but here's an example of something that's not defined. You're going to look in that styles pane, and anything that has this little, you know, box next to it is it's actually using whatever default style has been applied to it. In this case, it's figure. We delete anything tagged with figure as we place images. Um, so I'm not super concerned about that. But you know, a bad example would be if you know I was not defined, and then you define it as italic, and it changes every single piece of text in your book to be rendered as italic. So then we start getting into possible reflow, text moving around, things not being in the right place. So not only is it important to do in the design phase, but we look for it here as well. Let's see. I'm trying not to be too granular here, but I just want to make sure that we're not missing anything, any potential issues. Um, Style pairs, are they using the appropriate character style? That, that relates a little bit to those combined styles, like I think we saw EH hyphen I in our, in our exam. If you were to apply that style to a C head, then it would register as an issue, and you would have to make sure that it's applied to you know, CH I as opposed to BH I. A lot of that is spot checking. So let's go back to InDesign. And looking specifically for these styles. Now InDesign gives us a really nice uh, tool where we can search for style. Um, we go a long way there. If I go to um, edit and find, find change, it brings up a little find window. And not only can we search for different text, but if I were to go down here into the format bar, it allows me to search for specifically like I, or specifically uh, SUP for superscript. I can just click Find Next, and it takes and highlights you right there. So if I were um, QCing this document and I saw those combined styles, whether it's BHI or FBI for sidebar italics, I would then look for those styles and make sure they're in the right places. Uh, the List Unmappable Styles tool that we just used will also flag those as issues. So say, hey, I found this issue of something that's unmappable, and it's because you're using the wrong style pair. Some of the stuff could just be, you know, typesetter is not quite understanding the rules like this. Um, we're not understanding the effect of the styles that they're making. 
So that's why we build in these things to look for. Uh, it'll have you look for foreign language text and to see if the appropriate hyphenation dictionary was applied. Um, some of that is located up here. We can see if we highlight some text, it'll show you what dictionary it's using. So while you're scrolling through and looking for bad breaks and, and uh, stacks and things like that, you might just want to look into your InDesign file and say, like, oh, I saw a German word. Is it using a German dictionary or is it using an English dictionary? It's a little specific, but uh, you know, it sometimes might come up. Uh, are nested styles and grep styles uh, applied properly? Um, I can explain this if I want. I feel like it's a little above our level at this point. Um, but just know that there's a lot of different things in the scribe tools that we use um, will we'll sort of handle a lot of this effectively. Uh, it'll have you check that tables are styled correctly and is content properly centered. Uh, this was introduced because uh, we kept seeing these issues of uh, uh, indented centered text, so very, very specific. Uh, links and fonts, are they present? That gets into um, export issues that we've seen. So last week we discussed using this pre-flight tool. Does everyone recall that as we looked at it um, in the design QC checklist? So this is where we would look if we wanted to make sure that all the links, so all the images and fonts are present because you'll see an error here if, for example, I'm going to remove one of these images from the folder that it's drawing from. I'll just yank you over here. So we kind of generated an error. Uh, we generated an error where the file is missing now. Um, and we can look into this links palette. Let me see if it's thinking about it. I'm going to go to where you are. Pardon me one second. I'll just kind of try to generate this error for you real quick. Get out there. So we kind of generate an error. Let's say your type there has you know moved image files around, lost one, and now they don't have a file that's being linked. And now the pre-flight should say, hey, there's a missing link. Like right here, I can't find this file. So if I were to output a PDF, it's going to be a low resolution preview, which would be bad for your print. Some of those who are in InDesign and don't have the fonts, you may also see this coming up as an issue in your pre-flight window saying, I'm missing this, uh, you know, this font, I'm not using it. And if you're not seeing the pre-flight, just like with all the other windows, you can get to it by going to the Windows menu. And I believe it's under Output Pre-flight. So quite handy. Um, another thing I mentioned is that we're going to, again, give you guys like a basic template to use. I'm going to create a pre-flight profile that looks for a lot of different things, and it'll be embedded into that file. So if you wanted to start with something that you know already check for a lot of common issues, it'll already be embedded in there. But definitely be aware of this as a tool because this can run a lot of different checks for you in your file. Um, let's see, we look through the text flow and paste board. Um, this, is, this really relates to is there extra content over here, kind of in the wings? Uh, think, so, for example, I may have um, maybe your typesetter was setting up the text for the sidebar in a separate place, not using it in the window. Maybe they left it over there, or maybe it's an issue. So. Some of these may seem like huge mistakes that no person would make, but it's kind of like uh, there's a joke about signs. If you see a sign warning something, it's because someone did that. So that's why we have all these little QC checks. It's like we're trying to get around any of these issues that may come up. And a lot of them are because we kept seeing them come up in our file and that we specifically um, point them out. Uh, it'll have you look for any of these soft returns and paragraph breaks. Um, some of these will actually have a file applied or a, a search provided for you. Um, we don't want to do it for everything, but it might cause at least have you look at uh, is the typesetter breaking things correctly? If they need a new paragraph here, you know, are they putting in a soft return in a tab to try to fake it? Well, this would be incorrect. Or are they actually breaking a paragraph correctly? This this may be coming up in you get a correction. The author says. Hey, that should be two paragraphs. Are the paragraphs broken correctly? And then we get into text file checks. So we, we've made our InDesign checks and our PDF checks. Now I want to open that SAM file. 
Okay. Here we go. I'm going to open this in Sublime. And here we're just going to do like what we did with the count QC. We're just going to run through these checks and try to um, see if they pop up anything. They might be some false positives. Uh, I think there's at least one of those in this file. But we always run these checks to go through and kind of uh, identify any big errors. One well, of the nice thing about using the, like a SAM file to run your checks through, because you can catch a lot of different patterns and mistakes automatically, as opposed to scrolling through and hoping that your eye catches something. So here, it's just going to be back and forth between Chrome to get the search and Sublime to run the search. Here, I'm just copying with that click, opening up my find window, and pasting. So here's the first thing. Do opening and closing quotation mark match up? Here we can see that this catches an issue. I have a closing quote and no opening quote over here. Um, sometimes some of these quotation things could be correct. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a person who's continuing to speak in like a novel. Well, you might have a multi-paragraph person speaking, and they're going to break the paragraph and start a new one without a closing paragraph. So that would be a false positive. Here, this one looks slightly strange. I would expect some, you know, opening quote somewhere here. You may need to go to an editor to double check things. But for now, this is at least going to bring your attention to anything that is caught in these searches. Uh, you may look for making sure that M dashes are facing the right way. In our file specifically, there's no instances of this. Uh, that's built because sometimes there could be a weird little glitch. And if an M dash occurs, the quotation is flipped to the wrong way. And then you may check for the number of opening and closing paragraphs because, again, there should always be a pair. Um, you may, uh, uh, there's some instances where you could encounter some false positives. Again, if you have a list that's like one parentheses, two parentheses. Um, but for the most part, these are going to catch any possible issues. Right now, sorry, I did that too fast. Right now, we're looking for duplicate punctuation. And thankfully, we're not finding anything. We're going to look for spaces around opening punctuation. And yeah, we're not finding anything. Pretty clean. How about spaces before periods? That would be incorrect. And then spaces after punctuation, like if there was a hyphen and no space after that. Not hyphen, uh, comma. Some of them just look for random unexpected searches or unexpected strings. Sometimes these will catch things like double spaces, stuff like that. Spacing errors around hyphens. So here's one of those cases where it's kind of a false positive. It found this, but this is per perfectly fine to have um, like a split hyphenated word with an end, and the, you would expect that space to be after. And then we're going to look at our M dash or our ISBN. I don't think we have any in this book, so that's fine, but we always want hyphens between numbers in an ISBN. Sometimes you see N dashes, and that would be incorrect. Uh, we'll look around. Uh, I'll, I'll admit some of these searches based on the book itself. I do not run in, in, in a gossip way because this is just looking for, well, this is looking for regular spaces around non breaking spaces. There's another search that looks for all non breaking spaces to make sure they're used correctly. If I'm doing a 600 page textbook, I will probably not run that whole thing because I'm going to get about a thousand of those. And I don't need those. But for now, a lot of this can just be sort of, I don't, want to, I don't want to say mindless, but I'm just kind of running searches. And if I don't find anything, then I'm not really concerned about it. I may find actual issues. So here I'm looking at like, looks like maybe a space at the beginning of a word. Well, that's good reason to then go back to your InDesign documents and see what's going on. Um, that's right here. So here's an error right here that we found because of that search we ran. This is a, you know, it's missing part of the text. Could be a, an errant deletion that happened somewhere, a typesetter hitting the wrong button and you know, removing some text. But now the typesetter would need to go back and adjust their InDesign file. This is why is this chapter necessary? And that's what's nice about running these searches. They'll draw your attention to those possible issues that are really easy for you as a, as a human and not a machine to, to miss. Special characters, um, 
There's no search here, but it just calls your attention to the special characters issue. We talked about that a whole bunch in the vetting process. We're going to look at the hub, make sure the special characters are all accounted for, and then you might search for a couple of those to see if any, any come up. And then we'll check for line breaks. This is going to look for any um, word that starts with a, let's say, for example, lowercase letter. If you were to see this, you might say, like, well, maybe the types that are accidentally, you know, broke a line somewhere, and now we have a lowercase letter. And then we'll look for URLs. A lot of these are going to be just making sure that any URLs that are in your book, if there are any, are tagged correctly. Uh, let's see. Are they appearing correctly? So this is where it'll jump to any kind of URL formatted text, and you have the opportunity to make sure that they are. I, I certainly believe that. Um, uh, the um, let's see, uh, Richard, thank you for pointing that out. But I know this isn't edited at this point, so. Uh, while it's certainly good to know this, notice those things, and it would be listed as a uh, an error to the type setter. Um, that's not something that that I noticed, but that is your your keen eye. Yeah. Um, but so now we're just kind of scrolling through and making sure that these are linked appropriately. There's going to be a slight difference here. This URL has a, a link built into it. We can see that because it has this uh, href portion. Um, if you don't see that. In another URL, that's fine, because just by the nature of, and I'll jump to one, just by the nature of tagging this with a URL style, which we did in um, the rebreak URL tool, this will become a link with an href later on in the process automatically. Go back to our list. And then our URLs run together. Again, not something that I expect to see very often, but you definitely don't want it to happen. Go away. And if I don't find anything, then we're good. So by now, if I am the typesetter, I've gone back and made any corrections to the InDesign document. Uh, if I'm the PM and I'm reviewing the file, I've made a list for the typesetter to review. Uh, and then we'll go back and forth, you know, checking it until it's okay to move on. If we're not finding any errors, then it's good to send to the author to review, uh, to send to the proofreader. Uh, maybe you're indexing it at this point. There's a lot of different places they can go, but these are all the things we check for. So I know it seems like quite a long list, but a lot of them are things that I you know, always check for and always try to be mindful of, because if any one of those things were to go wrong, it could be like a minor annoyance or quality issue to catastrophic error. Um, and that's the reason why you always check for those things. 